This is the beginning of a determinative conference being held at the Fair Work Commission. This commission is now in session. Please be seated. Today's matter is U2016-99999. This is Dorothy. She says she was unfairly sacked from her job as an office manager for a building contractor. Well, good morning. My name is Commissioner John. And I'll start with this is Jerry, her former employer. He says it was not unfair to fire Dorothy. Dorothy, and you're representing yourself today? Yes, I am. Yes. And your name, sir? Jerry Hart. Today, this member of the Fair Work Commission will hear evidence and arguments and decide if Dorothy's dismissal was fair or unfair. Sometimes, a member will hear this evidence in a formal hearing. Other times, like today, they will conduct a determinative conference. The Commission member decides if a determinative conference or hearing is the most appropriate based on the circumstances and wishes of the parties. Alright, um, so let me make some brief opening statements just to explain uh, the process that we're going to go through today. Uh, this is a determinative conference uh, between Dorothy Davidson and Jerry Harley's Building Works PTY Limited. And as I understand it, um, Ms Davidson, you're seeking a remedy for unfair dismissal. And I confirm that having regard to the nature of this application and the circumstances of the parties, namely that you're both self-represented, I've decided that a determinative conference is the most appropriate course by which we should determine the matter today. Dorothy lodged an unfair dismissal application with the Fair Work Commission. That's why she's often called the applicant. Including any relevant evidence and submissions. As Dorothy's former employer, Jerry has to respond to her application. That's why he is often called the respondent. Dorothy had posted uh, some information on Facebook about the company, saying that we were sloppy and uh, not doing great work, which led to us missing out on a big tender, um, you know, a million dollars or thereabouts worth of, of potential work. Um, we had a bit of a discussion in the office and, and ultimately um, she was fired as a result of the Facebook post. I was blowing off steam because I'd had a hell of a week and that last Friday, that was it. That was the straw that broke the camel's back. Well, I worked in the business for 25 years. That's most of my working life. I worked for Jerry's father for most of that time and then um, about 18 months ago, Jerry took over from his father and frankly, I think Jerry's standards were pretty sloppy. My son had set my settings, that's what they, they're called, I believe, and I thought it was only friends who could see what I put up. The purpose of this conference is to enable you both to present your case to the Commission, including any relevant evidence and submissions. This in turn will enable me to make a decision about the appropriate orders, if any, that should be made in relation to the matter. Given the nature of the application, and the provisions of the Fair Work Act, what I'd like to do is start by clarifying the issues that are in dispute between the parties. So, as I understand it, there are no jurisdictional issues, but these are things that I just want to clarify with you. I was pretty nervous. I've never, obviously, you know, in this huge, long working life with this one company, I'd never done this before. And I felt pretty nervous and it was daunting representing myself. It's understandable that people would be nervous. It's an unfamiliar environment to a lot of people. But we try to provide a lot of resources to assist parties to understand what they can expect uh, when they come to the Commission. Determinative conferences and hearings are held at the Fair Work Commission. Our role is not to assist uh, either party. Our role is to conduct a fair hearing and a fair hearing requires that there be procedural fairness and requires that both parties are afforded natural justice and that both parties have an opportunity to present the best case they can. Participants receive a notice of listing in advance. It tells them where and when they must attend the Commission. They also receive instructions explaining what they need to do beforehand. These are called requirements. For more information, look for the link on this page to a video about preparing for and attending your determinative conference or hearing. Hearings and determinative conferences are both formal legal processes where evidence and arguments are presented. 
Either will reach the same result because the rules of the Fair Work Act apply equally to both. No, at the end of the day, the tribunal member has to consider all of the evidence, has to apply the Fair Work Act provisions and make a decision. In both a formal hearing and a determinative conference, transcript is taken and there will be a decision formally issued by the Fair Work Commission member. The advantage of a determinative conference is that it is less formal. Also, it's a conference which is conducted in private. So it's not a public hearing like you might see on the television, but rather a private conference. And because it's less formal, you'll find in a determinative conference that the tribunal member uh, is more directive about how the matter is to be conducted rather than sitting up on a bench and impassively waiting for the information to be brought to them. To represent yourself at a determinative conference or hearing, you need to do four things. The list is the same for the applicant and respondent. Everyone has to prepare some documents, attend the determinative conference or hearing, argue their case and usually question your witnesses and cross-examine the other party's witnesses. Uh, so I propose to conduct the conference in this way. First of all, I'll have my associate either swear you in or have you make an affirmation. Both are equally valid. And then we'll hear your evidence in relation to the matter. You should appreciate that once you've been sworn in or have made an affirmation, all the statements that you make as to facts will be taken as your evidence in the matter and anything that you say which is of a general comment, I will take as a submission from you. Is that clear? Do you understand what I mean by that? Yes. No, I think so. All right, very good. So what we'll do now is we'll have my associate uh, swear you in or administer the affirmation, as I say. Both are equally valid. Please state your full name and address. Dorothy Davidson, 47 Magnolia Close, Bricktown, Victoria. And do you wish to give the oath or affirmation? I wish to give the oath. Please address the crest and take the Bible in your right hand and repeat after me. I swear by Almighty God. I swear by Almighty God. That the evidence I shall give. That the evidence I shall give. In this matter before the commission. In this matter before the commission. Shall be the truth shall be the truth, the whole truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and nothing but the truth. Thank you. You can be seated. Stand up. Please state your full name and address. Jerry Harley, 800 Violet Street, Bricktown. And would you like to give the oath or affirmation? The affirmation. Please address the crest and repeat after me. I solemnly and sincerely I solemnly and sincerely declare and affirm declare and affirm that the evidence I am about to give that the evidence I'm about to give in this matter before the commission in this matter before the commission will be the truth will be the truth the whole truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth and nothing but the truth thank you thank you Mr Harley in a hearing, questioning is much more formal and questions can only be asked while the witness is in the witness box. But in their conference, Dorothy and Jerry give all their evidence while seated at the bar table. Each of you have provided some material to the Commission uh, in the lead up to this conference and I've had an opportunity to read that material. But I want to confirm that I have all the material that you've provided and I want to mark that material for identification. So let's just do that process now. So Ms Davidson, uh, as I stand it, we have uh, an outline of your arguments, is that right? Yes, Commissioner, that's right. All right, well, I'll mark that as Exhibit A1. And then we have... Um, a witness statement from you, is that right? Yes, that's correct. Okay, we'll mark that as Exhibit A2. These documents are very important. They are how each party presents their story and arguments about the dismissal to the Fair Work Commission. There are three important documents, document lists, statements of evidence and outline of arguments merits. Very important uh, to have filed those on time 
because the tribunal member will have had an opportunity to read them before coming into the determinative com conference and so has an idea then about well what are the real issues in dispute, what are the matters that the tribunal member needs to decide upon. A document list summarises all of your documentary evidence. That's things like employment contracts, emails, warning letters, pay slips or other relevant paperwork. Statements of evidence are often called witness statements. These allow a person who has witnessed something to tell the Commission about what happened. Everyone with something to say must provide their own statement of evidence. That includes Dorothy, Jerry and all other witnesses. What we want to know is what happened. We want to know what they saw. We want to know what they heard. So it's very important both in their written statement and also in their oral evidence that they talk about only their own experience of what they saw, of what they heard. And it's not relevant for them to talk about uh, gossip that they heard or um, things that were told to them that they didn't themselves observe or didn't themselves hear. Dorothy has two witnesses, her co-worker Sally and her son Dylan. Each has provided their own statement of evidence and each has attended the conference to be questioned or cross-examined. Now, if they don't attend the Commission and they don't provide the other side with an opportunity to put contrary allegations to them or to test their evidence, that's unfair on the person against whom the allegations is being made. And so in those circumstances, more often than not, we can't rely upon that evidence unless the person has come to give evidence, to indicate that what they're saying is truthful and to make themselves available for cross-examination. Jerry and Dorothy present their arguments in the third important document, their outline of arguments, merits. This is where people set out the details of why they think the evidence and arguments they have presented show the dismissal was fair or unfair under the provisions of the Fair Work Act. There's a link on this page to another video that explains how to complete these three very important documents. The Commission understands that presenting your arguments in writing can sometimes be challenging you'll have the opportunity to add to your written material at the conference. Now with the determinative conference, uh, the tribunal member will be a little bit more active in the conduct of the matter to ensure that all of the evidence comes out and all of the relevant documents come before him or her. Remember to bring all of the documents with you, including copies for the member and the other side. If an employer lodges a jurisdictional objection, they and the former employee will also need to lodge an outline of arguments, objections. For more information about jurisdictional objections, look for the links on the page you're on now. Uh, it's ordinarily, I think, useful for me to hear directly from a witness uh, about their experience. So can I invite you now just to tell me, uh, in relation to the termination of your employment, uh, what was the background and uh, what happened in terms of the termination and what impact that's had on you. So it's your opportunity now to give me your evidence in relation to that. All right. Um, I'm a bit nervous. That's all right. Just take your time. Okay. Thank you. Well, I have been working for this company for a long time, 25 years. And first I worked for this person's father and I worked very well with him. I was the office administrator and things were, were fine and we, we got on very well. Um, unfortunately, his father retired and um, Jerry then took over. And when, when was that? That was about a year or so, um, beginning of 2014. And things went rapidly downhill from there. He was sloppy. So unfortunately, he allowed um, paperwork to slip, pay slips not to be put in, in time or claims, employees um, were allowed to get away with very slapdash behaviour, uh, people coming into the office, contractors, people like that, the office was a mess, it was left in a mess, muddy boots coming in all the time from the, the employees and I kept complaining to him but he'd sort of do something for a while and then nothing and then um, you know, I think I was just treated as um, an older female, really, because I had to do the things like wash up the dishes in the sink, uh, and just things just became unbearable, really. So what, what was your role uh, with the company? Well, I was the office manager. I so what, what did your duties entail? Sorry, um, I had to do the book work, bookkeeper. I had to run the, the um, help with the uh, employment contracts, just get them ready. Um, I had to 
I had to do the pays, I had to do pretty much what a, an office administrator would do, but I actually had the overall um, carriage or oversight of, of the office itself. And up until the point in time where Mr Harley took over from his father, had there been any concerns raised with you about your conduct or performance in the workplace? No, we got on very well. We worked very well together and things ran pretty smoothly. And, and after Mr Harley took over, were there any issues raised with you about your conduct or performance in the workplace? Um, not that I can remember. I just, you know, probably thought that I complained a bit because I had every reason to complain. I mean, you know, he's just young and slapped at and just didn't do the job his father did. And was it this frustration that uh, led to the face Facebook post, is it? Yes. And so tell me about the Facebook post. What, what did you post on Facebook? Um, I posted that I was basically fed up and sick of it and um, I didn't really understand anything about hashtags, but um, the Facebook posts were that, you know, I was fed up with, with the workplace and not being taken seriously. And um, I just have friends on, on Facebook. So Ms Davidson, can I just get you to explain to me exactly what you posted on Facebook? Well, on the Friday, after all these dirty dishes were in the sink, um, that was enough. So I went home. I had a glass of wine. I was totally fed up and frustrated. And I went onto Facebook and I said, these guys are shoddy. Imagine how they must treat their clients. I wouldn't want them to build my house. And on your Facebook page, do you identify where you work? No, um, I just say, work's driving me mad. No, no, no. Just if I looked at your Facebook page, would I be able to identify who your employer is? No, I don't think so. How, how long have you had the Facebook page? Um, I think for about a year. My son helped me do it. I think it, about a year. I ha only had a few friends to begin with. And how, how many, would you really how many friends how would it. you have now? Oh, about 35. And did you do anything to have a look at what privacy settings you have on your Facebook page? No, not really, because I thought he'd done it for me. Right. When I say not really, no, because I don't know how these things work. He put my picture up, which I wasn't all that happy about. Right. Um, and so, what, what happened next? You've, you put, put the post up on Facebook. What happens next from your perspective? Well, I sort of calmed down a bit after the weekend because I thought, well, I've got that off chest so to speak but I thought what is going to change I was pretty fed up but went back to work on Monday as usual and just got on with trying to to do the job um, and then suddenly the next day I'm called into a meeting said I can bring someone if I, I want to but I didn't know why I had no idea what the meeting was about so Jerry was just off his head just furious and just spat out that um, he's now going to lose this tender because of um, my post. I was so confused because I didn't know if anyone other than my friends could see it and that I had no idea what he was talking about. And the meeting was so quick. After 25 years of being so dedicated to that company, trying to help him run it, trying to help him bring his standards up, and then that's it, I'm gone. Um, so, Mr Harley, this is an opportunity for you to ask any questions that you might have of Ms Davidson. Uh, if you would disagree with any aspects of her evidence, then you're obligated to put those matters to her to see whether or not she agrees with your construction of the evidence. Sure. So, do you have any questions for Ms Davidson? Yeah, I've got a couple. Um, who, who did you think would see the post? Just my friends. When you represent yourself, you are the one who must ask the questions. There are two types of questions you might be asking. The first is to your witnesses to help in presenting your case. The second is cross-examining the other party's witnesses to test or challenge their evidence or put forward a contrary allegation. Did you know that you know, some of your friends might work for companies in the building industry? No. It was a little bit confronting, but at the same time, um, uh, it was good to be able to put things to her myself. And have you heard uh, people talk about privacy settings on Facebook? I've heard the it. member can also ask questions if they choose, but it's up to you to ensure the right questions are asked to make the points that you want to make. I think one of the challenges for people uh, is around the procedures. 
And so oftentimes parties might not know how to lead evidence or how to cross-examine a witness. When asking questions, try to stay on topic. Don't ask about things unrelated to the dismissal, even if they make you angry. Sometimes it can help to prepare a list of questions in advance. It's important to not argue with the witness or try to make a statement and try to stay calm. I've never asked questions in a, you know, of a witness and been in a courtroom before. So I was pretty anxious about it. I didn't sleep very well. Ms Davidson, do you have some questions that you'd like to ask of your son in relation to the matter? Um, I do, a, yes. a couple, if that's all right. So, Dylan, um, you set up the um, Facebook page for me because yeah. um, I don't really think I had much idea. Can you just say when it was and what you did? It was roughly about a year ago and you asked me to set up your Facebook. Um, so I've got Dorothy's son, Dylan, is one of her witnesses. He has lodged a statement of evidence. And what settings, um, I believe it's called settings, what, what yeah. did you put on well, there for I me? I thought I set them to the highest privacy settings there was. Witnesses may not be allowed in the room until required to give evidence. They are also sworn in for the duration of the conference and give evidence from the bar table. Witnesses can be cross-examined about their evidence. In your witness statement, uh, Mr Davidson, you give some evidence about um, the fact that you thought the privacy settings were on friends only. Yeah. Do you have a different understanding now about, about what those settings were? I do now. So when Mum came home, she was very upset and she was saying... Oh, when me, she came home from where? From work. Right. I think it was on the Monday or Tuesday, a couple months ago. Um, she was really upset and she was saying something about the Facebook post. So I. She's asked me to check the, the settings on the Facebook, so I checked it again, and then I realised it was set to friends of friends, meaning that people um, who are friends with her, um, friends of her friends, uh, could see what she posted. And then I was like, uh-oh, and then I fixed it up. Um, well, they're all the questions that I had for you, but um, uh, Mr Harley might have some questions for you. Mr Harley, do you have any questions of Mr Dad? Yeah, I've got a couple questions. Yeah. So, since setting up your mum's account, have you ever gone back and, and checked the settings when they get updated from time to time? Only the once, and that was the day she came home after she was terminated. Do you think, would someone know where she works from what she posts, even if it's not well, specifically about um, work? Well, Mr Harley, I'm not sure that Mr Davidson could give evidence about what other people okay. might think or see. Sure. He can okay. only give evidence about his own experience okay. in that. So, do you think what your mum put on there was okay? Well, um, again, Mr Harley, um, it's really for me to determine in this matter whether there's a valid reason for termination sure. and whether that reason justified the dismissal. Okay. And whilst it might be interesting what Mr Davidson <coughs> thinks about it, it's not entirely relevant to the considerations. Of the okay. Well, I might just leave it there then. Right. After their evidence, witnesses could be excused or might be asked to stay in the room to answer any further questions that might arise. Call Sally Trial. Is that That's correct? correct. Yes. Dorothy's other witness, her workmate Sally, also presented her evidence and was cross-examined. So, Mr Harley, now that we've heard all of the evidence from Ms Davidson and her witnesses, mm -hmm. Um, I now want to provide you with an opportunity to uh, present your case to me and your evidence. Sure. Um, but let's just start with some preliminary matters. Um, you have filed a witness statement in relation to this matter, haven't you? Yes, I have. And have you had an opportunity to review that recently? Yeah, I read it this morning. Yes. And are, any, are there any corrections that you want to make to the witness statement? No, I think, uh, I think it's fine. And are its contents true and correct? Yes. And would you like me to receive it as your evidence in these proceedings? Uh, yes, please, Commissioner. Yes. Well, we previously marked your witness statement as Exhibit R1. Um, what I would be assisted by, though, uh, is if you, in your own words, uh, tell me your story and what happened in relation to this matter. Sure. So there's a little bit of backstory to it. Um, and if you like, I can start there, or would you prefer no, that no, I start let's, with let's, the termination? Let's start there first. So essentially, there's been a little bit of a... A, a build up to this point uh, insofar as, and we've heard it earlier, um, the, Nate, the, the complaining about the way I run my business since taking over from my dad. Um, and uh, it seems uh, a lot of what Dorothy's concerns are were more that my dad wouldn't have done them the way that I choose to do them. 
Um, and so I think uh, this particular instance, like I said, it's, that's the, where we've come to, to that point insofar as um, the decision that was made is not one that my dad would have made in Dorothy's mind. But essentially where we, what happened with this particular instance is we, Dorothy and I had a bit of a, a, a discussion, a fairly robust discussion, one that we've had before around about um, some of the, the workers walking into the office with muddy boots. Um, and uh, as a result of that, I reminded um, Dorothy of the, the signs that we'd posted of the conversations that I'd had with some of the, some of the tradies um, and, you know, and asked them to be mindful of, uh, of not coming in and dirtying up the office. Dorothy is able to cross-examine Jerry. Okay, but I'm asking you about not getting the timesheets there for me to do the pays properly. You, and the effect it had on me doing my job for you yep. and the company. Yeah, and, and that, that was something that we've been working on for a while. And we've asked the, How? the tradies to be on time. I mean, you can't force them to, to do it. They don't get paid if they don't get the timesheets in. Like, they have an incentive to get them in. So. Um, but what did you do it. about bringing it to their attention? From my point of view, it just kept happening. So what yeah. did you actually do? Well, we spoke about I that. guess, sorry to interrupt, Ms. Jameson. Um, I guess from my perspective, uh, I'm here to determine whether the termination of your employment was harsh and just or unreasonable. Um, it's not so much an inquiry into the business practices of Mr. Harley. So. What I'm having difficulty understanding is how this line of questioning is going to assist me to determine whether your dismissal was unfair. When all the evidence has been heard and tested, the parties are given time to summarise their case. They can argue why the facts they are presenting mean the dismissal was fair or unfair according to the rules in the Fair Work Act. It would be very helpful uh, if you could address each of the aspects of section 387. Uh, but you should feel free to uh, make any closing statement that you like in relation to the matter. Uh, I might have some questions. Uh, then what we'll do is we'll come to Mr Harley and provide him with an opportunity to have his closing submissions and then you will get a right of reply because it's your matter. So Thank I can you. ask you to start, please. Um, well, I can see that there, there might have been a reason, but I think it was disproportionate. Sometimes it will be possible for the member of the Fair Work Commission to take a short adjournment, uh, to collect their thoughts and look over the evidence that they've received that day, and then come back and deliver an oral uh, decision. But there are times when, during the course of the determinative conference, it becomes a little bit more complex, and the tribunal member will want an opportunity to review all of the evidence, to consider that against the law and the legal authorities, reserve their decision and then issue a written decision in due course. The majority of decisions are reserved, so this is not unusual or uncommon. If it happens to you, you won't have to come back to receive the decision. You'll receive an email with the decision, and it will also be published on the Commission's website. Uh, so what I am going to do is reserve my decision. Can I thank you both for your attendance here today for your evidence? It was quite daunting. I just wanted to get my story out and, and to have my version of events heard. I think the main thing is to be prepared. Um, if you put a bit of work in beforehand, I think that is the biggest, um, the best thing that I did. Overall, I think um, I got my side of the story out and I felt that um, he had really listened to me and given me the opportunity also just to ask the questions that I should ask or wanted to ask. It gave me a bit of guidance if I went too far. If a dismissal is found to be fair, the application is dismissed and the matter is at an end. But if it is found to be unfair, the member can make orders for a remedy. The remedies available under the Fair Work Act include ordering that the employee be reinstated, if appropriate, or the payment of compensation to the employee. Compensation is capped by the Fair Work Act. The Act also determines how compensation is to be calculated. There is more information on the webpage you're on now. There are videos about completing your paperwork, attending your determinative conference or hearing, and questioning and cross-examining witnesses. 
There's also a link to more details about jurisdictional objections and a link to the bench book, which contains useful information about the unfair dismissal sections of the Fair Work Act. <laughs>